I read a book about Ealing when I was quite young, uh, 30 plus years ago now, and that was um, when most of the films I was able to just see once and then make a few notes and then work them into the book. And Dance Hall was something I didn't linger much over, and I'm slightly embarrassed when I look back at the book and just has a little paragraph and says it's a, a decent little film, basically. Uh, but it's it's actually much more important than that. It's one of those films uh, Ealing, of Ealing's that have grown with the years, I think, particularly when you look back uh, from uh, um, a feminist point of view because it's one of the few Ealing films that is fully centred on, on women. And I think that's probably one of the reasons that it didn't get uh, a, a very positive press at the time. The me mostly male critics uh, patronised it. And possibly the reason why in the late 70s, I was rather patronising to it, but it's it, it, now when you can get the DVDs and watch and re-watch, you realise what a... Uh, that it's a much more complex and much more important film and much more interesting product of its time in 1950, five years after the end of the war, than people realised um, in the past. It's very much a project by a woman writer or by Ealing generally to redress the balance of its um, familiar male-centred groups, which go right back to wartime and the, 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 ma the male-dominated communities of their army films and their home front films, largely male-dominated. And here it, it's centred on, on uh, a group of women who go to the dance hall of the title and escape from the, the dullness of their post-war, the, the restrictions of their post-war rationed uh, factory working life and then uh, when they're married the the restrictions of their married life at home not working by going to the dance hall and it works out a rather intriguing structure of the um, tension between um, uh, the, the communal responsibilities and and the uh, the sort of rather more dangerous desires that get unleashed and indulged in the context of the dance hall. I'm positively through with men. I was only interested in you because you were fond of dancing. So for goodness sake, don't go getting any ideas into your head. I mean, I might have been interested in you once, but after the way Jack, Fred treats me, especially Fred, why, it's enough to put a girl off men for life. I mean... The, the main story, and really one of the most interesting narratives in, in the whole of post-war Ealing, is, is the story of the Natasha Parry character, who's the, the really the dominant woman, the one we get closest to, the one who's on whom the most interesting conflict is centred between, on the one hand, the uh, the man that she marries and the pull of respectability and responsibility and keeping house for your man uh, on the one hand and the, the lure of the dance hall and the more glamorous figure of the man who's um, who, who is part of the package of the dance hall. Try on, really. Trying to get me up to his flat. Oh, I don't believe there are any kippers. Are you kidding? The place looks like an aquarium, doesn't it, Eve? Does it, Eve? Phil, I forgot to tell you. Phil, the kippers we had for supper, they were from Alec. Happened to be in the high street and I met Alec and told me he had the kids. I well they were awfully good, weren't they? When my apartment looks, you'd think I was holding a cat's convention. Oh, Mr. Fairfax, I've lost my bag. Can you tell me what to do about it? Yes, yes. Mm, I think he's cute. Don't forget to send him his kippers. Or are they any if you'll go? But... Only for my girlfriends, baby. With me, it's not etchings. I just say come up and see my kippers and they come a run. It was, uh, like a lot of Ealing films, an original script. It wasn't based on pre-existing property. And it has three really interesting names on the uh, credits as writers. One of them is Alexander McKendrick, who had already directed his first feature film 
Whiskey Galore, but he hadn't been given another film yet, so he acted as second unit director and also as co-screenwriter. Um, there's a man called E.V.H. Emmett, who had a bit of an association with Ealing, uh, and but his main job was as a newsreel commentator, a very familiar newsreel commentary voice. Uh, and But the third writer, who I think is probably the first writer and probably the originating writer and the most important writer, is uh, Diana Morgan, who is the only <coughs> woman member <coughs> of um, what Balkan used to call his creative elite, that is, his producers, uh, directors and writers. I don't want to be late. Right, Mum. Hello, Mr Wilson. Hello, Mrs Wilson. Is Georgie ready yet? Nearly. Come in, Carol. I'll open the door for you. Oh, that's all right. Hey, Georgie, buck up. I shan't be long. There's a bit about the semi-finals in the paper tonight. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Georgie got in the final? We mustn't expect too much, dear. Georgie Wilson, Greater London's new ballroom queen. <laughs> Just like that. Is that what they have to wear? Oh, only the big shots. But she'd have to have something pretty snappy if she gets into the final. Georgie, have you got a flat tire or something? I'm ready. Bye, Mum. Bye, Dad. Won't be late. Come on, Carol. You better run. Who, me? Well, she may not get into the finals. She will. There was no question of having a woman director. Balkan uh, was on record uh, as saying that he didn't really think women could direct. Uh, he didn't allow Muriel Box to direct a film when there was a possibility of it happening. Uh, she went on to become a director elsewhere a few years later, likewise Wendy Toy. It would have been very interesting uh, to have had a, a woman directing dance hall because it is entirely centred on a, a group of women. Uh, and uh, Charles Crichton, who was by now a very experienced Ealing director, known particularly for uh, a number of Ealing comedies, um, well, for the first of the main Ealing comedies, Hue and Cry, and later became very identified with Ealing comedy. Uh, he directed it and he said in interviews later that he didn't want to direct it. He was told by Balkan to direct it and then he could go on and make a film that he was more interested in, had more of a personal interest in it. So he said he did it as a job of work. You must have thought so too. Running to him the minute my back was turned. It's a filthy lie. Is it? Well, you ought to know about lies. Oh! That was a stupid Let thing to do. Let me go. Don't you dare. Well, you certainly made an exhibition of yourself. Yes, the minute I married oh. you. You're horrible. Thanks. You're jealous of everything and everybody. You won't let me do anything or go anywhere. You just want me to stay at home and be bored, bored, bored. What about me? I've been pretty bored too, seeing you mooning around, thinking about Barry. Come anywhere. I was never bored with him. I expect you wish you'd married him. Yes, I do. Yes. But he didn't need to marry you, did he? Oh! Dancehall didn't make a very strong impact at the time. Uh, it didn't do very well at the box office. Uh, it seems to have had mostly lukewarm reviews. And Charles Crichton, the director, uh, didn't uh, wasn't wasn't very happy with it. He thought he'd done a decent job, but uh, nobody saw it as an Im important film. Uh, it was just a sort of Ealing production line film, one of the ones that hadn't done too well as far as they were concerned. Uh, since then, uh, particularly becoming more available domestically uh, and online, it, it's acquired um, more of a following. And I was interested to see the other day that uh, an article from the 90s, late 90s, where Terence Davies, the British director, most recent film of Deep Blue Sea, one of the um, finest British directors, uh, he named it in an article he wrote on so-called guilty pleasures for an American film magazine. He said there were a whole lot of films of the 40s and 50s, particularly British films, that he loved, partly because they were uh, rather flaky uh, and um, not done with a professional Hollywood polish. 
and he enjoyed the fact that the women didn't really all have appropriate accents. He enjoyed the tension between the an actress like Natasha Parry uh, and the sort of um, class position that she was supposed to represent. But anyway, he was clearly interested in it and loved seeing it. And since then, um, a whole lot of critics, particularly um, women critics, have quite rightly and convincingly latched onto it and 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 I've been very much influenced by them in going back to the film and in rethinking it and they're absolutely right you know there is a, a lot there for the historian um, and for the student of cinema to um, to learn from the social historian as well as the um, pure historian of cinema about the role of women in Britain post-war and the kind of um, conflicts that they faced between domesticity and desire, if you like.